Who's the redhead? I've never seen him on the bench before. Who the fuck's that? Should I know who that is? I don't know who that is. My first summer in high school had ended. To be honest, I no longer remember what I felt, thought, strived for at the time. Only that I was simpler, more naive. It was a normal school day. Fundamentally, our high school differed from its middle counterpart, only in name, and was located on the same grounds. I knew many of the students. We had been in the same class before. Besides, my good chubby friend Kyosuke was sitting next to me. I think it's weird we've ended up in the same class however many times now. Are you implying that it's not a coincidence? He made one of those grins that practically screamed, Come on, ask me what I mean. I'm just stating a fact. Because if I thought you arranged it somehow, I'd start to feel weird. Scared, even. Why me exactly? Who else could it be? He hopefully mumbled something in response. I think we've got a nice class here. I looked around the classroom, but my eyes didn't linger on anyone in particular. Probably because I didn't have any particular ties to any of them. What do you think about? He moved closer to me and whispered, The girls. I don't really know. They have boobs. I'd lie if I said I didn't think about it. Hey, nor any normal guy my age does. But thoughts were where it ended. It's hard for me to imagine myself next to someone other than Himitsu. Even though I didn't think about her that way either. That's your problem. If you're gonna rank them, who do you get first place? Ratings are your thing. Piss off. Nah, but y'all y'all know that's that's classic high school right there. I see that carries over and <laughs> Listen. I'm not saying it's 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 I don't condone I'm not condoning, alright? Judging people based on their appearances, but y'all know that was the high school thing, alright? Y'all know they were doing about you too. You may be th reading that being like, oh wow, ranking your classmates based on their appearance. Y'all know they did the same shit about you. Maybe you didn't do it, but y'all know... Don't think you were left out of the conversation. You were in the conversation. Yeah, we always had those conversations, bro. Alright. Bro, okay. The juniors. Rank them, who you think? Like, oh, for sure, number one, uh... Maribel. I don't know why that's the fucking name I came up with. I don't know, I was trying to think of some stupid-ass name that wasn't in my school. And that's definitely a stupid-ass name that wasn't in my school. Maribel? Oh, fucking Baby Bell. <laughs> the old cheese head over there. <laughs> yeah, good old Baby Bell. <laughs> yeah, like Baby Bell. Number one. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, number two. Sargento. You know Sargento coming in hot with that Sargento cheddar slice. Don't think I forgot. Right. But, um. Why? I've gone from, like, talking about ranking women in high school, and now I'm just starting to talk about cheese. This is getting weird. Anyway. I cracked back in good nature. You're obviously hiding something. Where's your fucking Sargento? Uh, why would I be hiding something? Fine, I'll start then. What do you think about... Pepper Jack? He raised his finger and started to run ar around the classroom as if choosing a toy in a shop's window. That is creepy. Winter song, let's say. Catherine was sitting behind the front desk, her back turned to us. Her long hair lay so smoothly that it resembled a frozen water ball. Although coldness was also inherent to her character. At least that's how it seemed to me. Crazy. Coldness? Miss Winter. Miss Winters. Coldness? That's wild. I don't really know. I absolutely did know. If I answered Kelsey's question seriously, which I never would, Catherine Winters would be at the top of my list. Why? We're both foreigners. So clearly that means you want to fuck each other. I actually think that's a bit chauvinistic. What? I said the last word in English because I read it in some sci-fi novel and simply didn't know how to say it in Japanese. Apparently the vocabulary of the heroes in Kyosuke's manga was a bit poorer. I'm calling you a dickweed. <laughs> you realize your reaction is a little suspicious? You do realize you can blow me? Fine, what do you want to hear? Rate her out of 10. Let's say... 7? So low? Hey, 7's a passing grade, my guy. I'd be honored to be ranked at a 7. Like, come on, if someone said, hey, bro, you're solid 7, I'd be like, what? Nah, you playing, you playing, you playing, nah, what, me? A huh? Come on, bro, no, what? Wild. Acting like, so that's a passing grade, my guy. It's if you, go, that's like the nice little average. If you go above 7, that's when they're like, they're, that's a, mmm, mmm, mmm. And I can't lie, yo, Catherine. I'd agree, above a 7, but 
saying seven's bad, no, no, no. If you're six or below, that's when it's just kind of like, oh, okay. That, they're right. You know, six or five, the six and a five is like, they're all right. Eh, you know, not my first choice, but hey, they're, they're there. And if you're in like the fours or below, it's like, ugh, wrap it up. Go home. Hey, what were we doing? Having a flashback? Go on. <laughs> What, should you give a 10 to each and every one of them? Having a top score wouldn't mean shit then. We're not in first grade and it, where everyone gets A's in art class. I didn't get any A's. <laughs> You're a different story. I'm talking about normal people. Oh, is that so? Should I pass your score over to Mrs. Winters then? He stood up from the chair theatrically slowly. What are you doing? Calm down and sit. Of course I didn't believe that Kyosuke really intended to do that. First and foremost, I didn't believe he had the courage. Scared, are you? I'm really not. Just why? Let's call it putting your personal life in order. Otherwise, you'll be alone forever. Look who's talking. Else, did you think to ask for her opinion first? Well, you are quite the guy. The cock of the walk. He grinned and finally sat back down. Now, fuck up, put your cock in a walk. Fry that shit right up, feed it to a dog. When you're the one saying that, it just sounds wrong. Yeah, don't talk about how my cock walks. We laugh together. Ah, uh, flashback over with, that's nice. Lessons ended, and I was on my way home with Himitsu. Oh no, still in flashback mode. I couldn't get Kyosuke's classmate ranking out of my head. Or at least the rank of one classmate. Catherine Winters. I had paid attention to her before. Maybe it actually was because she wasn't Japanese, but more likely because she was beautiful, elegant, clever, and possessed a kind of mysterious charm. At the time, I didn't realize she was simply more mature and feminine than the other girls. And in some case, Kyosuke was right. I was hiding, even if just for myself that I liked Catherine, which is quite easy to do if you don't think about a girl in the context of a relationship. We talked about the beauty of actresses on TV screens, but few people actually fall in love with them. It's another matter when the actress is your classmate. That makes her way more human, in a sense, and also available. Not just a 2D picture, but a real girl you can at the very least talk to. Listen, do you like anyone in your class? I asked Himitsu, continuing the flow of my thoughts aloud. But to her, the question was completely unexpected. Like? Uh, what do you mean? Well, any of the guys. Why do you ask, Nika Ken? I'm just talking with Kyosuke over break. New class, new school, you know. So? Do you like someone? At the time, I didn't even think about Himitsu's feelings. I didn't think the conversation might be unpleasant for her. We were just talking about a normal school day with a friend. I don't really know. I grinned stupidly, scratched the back of my head, and turned away to hide my embarrassment. Nika Ken! He was just said angrily. You would have brought this up for no reason. Alright, my bad. There may be a certain... Uh, American. Way to be subtle. American, huh? He was drawled. Is she pretty? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, she's certainly not going to like you. Oh, get his ass, Himitsu. Why is that? I asked with indignation. Because you're lazy, rude, insensitive, also sloppy and scruffy. Imagine if she saw what goes on in your room. Hey, every dude drags off furiously 24 hours a day. I'm not. Listen. <laughs> he used to said all this in good nature, but her words still got to me. Why, thank you for the compliments. But that's the truth. You can't be offended by the truth. Oh, yes, you can. Truth. Yeah, right. I grumbled. In all seriousness, though. Himitsu said a little later, her voice now completely different. What do you think about that girl? I think she got titties. I don't think anything yet. So you're just gonna watch from a distance and do nothing? Fucking little pussy ass bitch? I don't know. That's not right, I think. If you like someone, you should tell them. Yeah? You gonna do something about that, Himitsu? You gonna live up to your own advice there? Hmm? Would you? Me? We're talking about you right now. Maybe I will. <laughs> Yo, Catherine. Nice. <laughs> but time passed, and it became obvious that I had to do something. I thought of Catherine more and more often, and the thoughts were starting to become frankly obtrusive. But at first, even approaching her seemed like an impossible task to me. So inaccessible, she appeared. Besides, Catherine barely talked to our other classmates either. At first, I thought it was just due to her personality, but some things would get, sometimes things would get simply ridiculous. 
At one time, working in a pair, she went an entire lesson without saying a word. Proudly, with her head held high and a sense of dignity to her. Just like a real lady. But still, silently, and she ended up with an F. It would be one thing if that was all there was to it, but it was an English lesson. It was hard to doubt Catherine's knowledge of it, but a school is a social institution where both the result and the method matter. You could solve math problems with a calculator, but you wouldn't get an A for it. In the end, Katya turned up her nose and left the class. I felt like it was my chance to complain about terrible about how terrible a stomach ache. <laughs> complaining about a terrible stomach ache to the teacher went after her. I'm giving an F to a native is messed up. That's exactly why I don't take Russian. Man, it's just gonna try and walk up real smooth. Hey, hey, we all fuck up sometimes. Anyway, can I slide inside? I mean, uh, I caught up to her on the scare uh, staircase? On the staircase and awkwardly tried to start a conversation. Catherine just gave me a look of distrust and said, Yeah. Her Japanese grades weren't exactly amazing either, to say the least. And thus, finally, I found Catherine Winter's weak spot. At lunch, I approached her, smiled, and started to speak, to speak in Japanese as legibly as, as legibly as I could manage. Hi, right, sorry for this saying this out of the loop, but I noticed you're having a hard time with Japanese. Mind if I help? My name's Nikolai, by the way. She raised her surprised eyes at me and answered coldly, Thank you, but I'm fine. I mean, I understand that it's really stressful to end up in a foreign country, and a new school, too. I've just been living in Japan for a while now. I'm fine. She interrupted me in the same tone. You know, the language matters the most. The faster you learn it, the faster you'll adapt. Catherine's look robbed me of all my resolve to continue. Or not. Smooth. Real smooth, my guy. From the first moment of our acquaintance, Miss Winters made it clear that she only saw me as yet another annoying classmate. She wasn't any good at making friends, and I wondered more and more often if her lack of Japanese skills really was the reason for it. However, besides disappointment, I was also overflowing with enthusiasm, a desire to get my way at all costs. One day in the canteen, I unceremoniously sat across from Catherine without an invitation. Oh, So this man was the annoying bastard, I got you. I just wouldn't give up. Hey, listen girl, how you doing? No. I bet. Ten minutes later, hey girl, how you doing? No. Oh, I bet. <laughs> bon appetit. She didn't respond, didn't even seemed to pretend I wasn't there. I just wanted to say I know we got off on the wrong foot. My bad. I shouldn't have imposed myself like I'm doing now. It's not your fault. Catherine immediately switched to English. I just don't need help with Japanese. My knowledge is quite sufficient to survive the next three years here. Do you really hate it here that much? I responded in English as well, in anticipation of a reaction. Catherine didn't even bat an eye. How do I put it? it? Seemed like I had been reading too much of Kyosuke's manga. Why did I even think? Why did I even think she thought that I didn't know English? In any case, she was now much friendlier than the first time. At least by her standards. You know, at first I was really afraid of this new country. Everything was so big. Except the penis size, am I right? Although I had a easier, of course, being a child and all. I really blended in with the penis sizes. Continuing to demonstrate her utter lack of interest, Catherine finally joined the conversation. How old were you? Seven, can you imagine? I said enthusiastically. I can. I was seven once too. <laughs> Bro. Bro, I have been seven years old too. Holy shit, this is wild. We've got so much in common. You were seven years old once upon a time. I was seven years old once upon a time. Like, honestly, I think we were made for each other. <laughs> so I brought you here to Japan. I mean, not the canteen. My mom is a diplomat. Oh, really? My parents are engineers. They work for Kobayashi Corporation. Heard of it? I have. I think I kept poking your fork into something that probably used to be a beef roast. So you're from the Soviet Union then? Yes, ma'am. Nikolai Anakin, at your service. Our countries don't have the best relationship. Why do you think ours would be any better? She smiled, if barely. Well, politics aren't my strong suit, but I don't think the common people should suffer because of the decisions of a bunch of idiots at power. That is 100% true. I know he's just using it as a pickup line, but, uh, speak them facts, my G. I immediately realized it was correct to sit in power, but Catherine didn't give me a chance to correct myself. That's a very shallow understanding of politics, Nikolai. I did say it's not my strong suit. So you advocate for world peace and friendship among all peoples. That'd be better, wouldn't it? I guess. What about you, then? Why are we even talking about politics? I laughed. You started it. 
No, I didn't. You said that our country should not have the best relationship. Well, let's say so. It was nice talking to you. Catherine stood up, took her tray, and left. I thought I was going to stop her. This round had clearly been lost. Several more days passed, and I was waiting for Catherine at the school gates to go home together. Yeah, right. Next, I'd be offering to carry her backpack. I probably still hadn't realized at the time, but my attempts to get close to her were transforming into a sort of competition between the two of us. Oh, hey, going home? Me too. You know, wow, you're going home, I'm going home? Christ, our similarities, they just keep to be, you know, popping up everywhere. Like, we're, we're practically the same person. What a coincidence. The only result of my actions so far was the fact that she started to show more emotions. Most of which are more or less thinner than the definition of the word sarcasm. You taking the subway? Yes, for some reason I feel like so are you. For your information, I could go on foot, but since we've got ourselves this coincidence, I don't mind at all, don't get me wrong. I would never, God forbid. For a while we walked in silence, I pretended to harbor a grudge against Catherine, and she wasn't one to start a conversation. Or so it seemed to me. Your English is pretty good. I read a lot. What do you read? Porn. Science fiction mostly. Sheckley, Clark, Samak, Heinlein. I don't like science fiction. Yeah, me neither. You know, I've never read a single page of it. It's just god awful. Anyway, what do you read? Well, girls rarely do. Do you know many? Oh! Ooh! Ooh! Scorch's ass! Mmm! 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 A couple. Himitsu, for one. Oh yeah, who's number two? Where's the couple come into play, huh? Who's number two? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, Himitsu, and, uh, you. <laughs> and let me tell you, neither of you like science fiction, so, um, point one for Nikolai. <laughs> I see. From that moment on, my presence no longer interested her. What books do you like? Books? I hear what I say. All kinds. Oh, but except science fiction. Uh-huh. All kinds, but what about science fiction? It's like those people whenever you say, oh yeah, I listen to all kinds of music, and they're like, oh yeah? What about progressive Swedish orchestral death metal, huh? Yeah, I didn't think so. My patience ran out. Listen, maybe you should stop acting like this? How am I acting exactly? Yeah, I know, like a bitch. Catherine even stopped. You know full well that I like you, then why all this? If you said no right away, we wouldn't need to put on this act. You like me? That's when I grew embarrassed. Isn't that obvious? Not to a girl. Didn't you say you have a lot of experience with them? No. He said he knew them. At least two of them, in fact. <laughs> Not that he had a lot of experience with them. I said nothing like that. And anyway, so you want to date me? Well, yeah, that's a given. Alright. Alright, what? I asked dumbfounded. Let's date. Just like that. You did say that I could have said no right away. I chose to say yes. Catherine gifted me with a genuine smile. Well, okay then. I almost asked, what should we do now? By the way, we're here. And indeed, the station showed up from behind the corner. You must have a lot to think about. And since you don't live far from here, see you tomorrow then, boyfriend. Catherine flashed an even cuter smile and left me standing in a complete stupor. Today, I know that this kind of behavior was at least somewhat normal for her, but at the time, I was so shocked that I didn't even feel any particular joy. Maybe I'd feel something similar if a hundred kilogram piece of concrete fell on the ground a meter away from me. It's nice that it didn't fall on my head, but the following days were each one better than the other. I grew closer with Catherine, even though I didn't quite understand why she was like that, she became less arrogant. One day, we were sitting in a park bench, embracing each other. Oh, how scandalous. But, unfortunately, I am going to end this recording session here. I'm not going to lie, I've been a bit tired. I think you could probably pick that up from all the fucking nonsense I've been fucking spouting off this last, like, half hour. <laughs> I just wanted to finish, I wanted to finish the flashback, honestly, but I think we found a good stopping point. I think we're getting to like the true confession moment of where he like confesses their feelings, they start fucking, and then they break up, and then they stop fucking. <laughs> I just keep talking is the problem. That's the problem, right? I just keep talking. Whatever. Like I said. 
I, I'm gonna end this recording session here before I say any more stupid shit. So uh, it's either gonna be a quick jump cut or a new or, or a new recording session or a new video. But regardless, I'll see y'all in the next run. Till then, base. <laughs> uh, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to some more Love Money Rock and Roll. In the previous recording session, we wrapped up Kagome's route, started in on Himitsu's route. And, uh, at first, I didn't remember much of what happened thus far in Himitsu's route. Because I was trying to think, like, how, what events had happened with Himitsu. And there, but then, you know, I load up the game, I look at this, and I realized, oh yeah, not a whole lot did happen with Himitsu. We've been seeing a lot of Catherine. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of Catherine. <laughs> it's been all about Catherine these last few hours. Catherine shows up, she tries to sleep with Nikolai, tries to create tension there, he's like, no, get off me, crazy woman. She invites him over to his place, he realizes that she sent, that she sent him some fucking notes. Uh, he, he runs out of there, like, get away from me, crazy person, which still holds up. Now they're in some kind of flashback, if I remember correctly. But yeah, 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 that's the thing. So far, there's been a whole lot of Catherine. Been seeing a whole lot of Catherine. Haven't seen a whole lot of Himitsu, I'm not gonna lie. Himitsu's been there, alright? I am going down Himitsu's route, I'm pretty sure. And like, she's definitely there. She definitely has moments. But like, it's it's been a lot of Catherine. Unfortunately, much to my dismay, a lot of Catherine. But anyway, without further ado, let's jump back into it with this flashback. One day we're sitting in a park, embracing each other. America doesn't have parks like this one. Really? Seems like a pretty normal park to me. No, not normal at all. It's beautiful. Quite peaceful. Well, at least there's something in Japan that you like. Catherine's laugh was barely audible. By the way, do you know that in Russia you'd be called Katya? Katya? That sounds weird. I think it's really cute. I'll be calling you that from now on. <laughs> yeah, because that's how nicknames work. It's like, no, no, this is what I'm calling you. Deal with it. No way. You don't like it? You'd be called Nick in America. You already call me Nick. She didn't respond, only sank deeper into my shoulder. We'll leave this pr place, right? Later, when we finish school. For America? I couldn't say the prospect made me too happy. It seemed that my psyche wouldn't withstand another big relocation. For America, or somewhere else? For the USSR? I don't know. <laughs> We'd need to get married first. Why's that? They won't give me a visa otherwise. Mom works at the embassy, so we can come up with something. Do you think she'd be happy that instead of going to college, her daughter... Who said instead? Katya asked with indignation. Oh, we need to live on something. You'll go to work then. You don't want to study anymore either way. Sir, yes sir. She laughed again. Do you really want to do all that? With me? No. The question surprised me and I looked at her, but Catherine lowered her head. Of course, wouldn't be here otherwise. Here? In this park? Or in Japan? On this earth, Kyosuke invites me to the Yamato crew all the time. You have weird friends. You're also weird. My friends are totally normal. By the way, Himitsu's wanted to meet you for a while now. Your childhood friend? The half-Russian one? Yeah, I've told you about her. You must have way more in common with her, right? He totally should, right? Even if I thought about it, I couldn't say what interested... What interested I... I think you mean interests? I couldn't say what interests I shared with Himitsu. What are you hinting at? Nothing at all. She roughly stood up from the bench and stretched her hand out to me. There's a special offer at the bar today. Buy two burgers for the price of three and get the third one for free. You're pulling my leg. I grabbed her hand and pulled her to me. <laughs> 